Well, hello, hello, everybody. How are you doing? How are you doing? This is the S. Anthony Thomas. This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast, episode number 427. And uh, a little earlier, uh, I was watching the Super Bowl. I just want to say to Los Angeles, congratulations for your first Super Bowl since, what, 2000, the 1999-2000 season. And as someone who used to live there, I lived there the, the almost the entire 90s. Congratulations. I got a lot of friends out in Los Angeles, and I know that you will obnoxiously be calling me on my cell phone at four o'clock in the morning, not remembering about the time difference because I'm on the East Coast. You dumb bastards. So uh, <laughs> uh, uh, don't do that. Thank you. OK, so congratulations. And uh, now we move on to today's or this week's or whatever is episode of the pod. And uh, I'm going to tell you something. You know, I, I I stream my music. I listen to music on YouTube and you know, watch it on YouTube or whatever. And it just it's amazing how fast things have changed. I remember when there was no Internet. I remember before there were CDs. I remember buying cassettes, you know, and now, you know, I, I told you I talked about it earlier on a podcast. I don't remember which one podcast. It was either this podcast or the other one where my nephews literally laughed me out of the house when I was telling them about how much I used to like to go to record stores. It was an event going to the record stores, especially if an artist that you loved dropped a new album, right? They dropped a new album. Now, when you when I, when my favorite artists drop albums now, they just drop it on Spotify at midnight and I get a notification, your favorite artist dropped an album, you can stream the whole damn thing. And, you know, if you're paying for Spotify or if, you know, it's, what is it, 10 bucks a month or whatever the hell it is, or uh, maybe if you, uh, I think I think they have a, a tier where it's just commercials or some crap. Whatever streaming service you listen to, uh, you know, the album just boom, it appears out of nowhere. But back then, you used to have, I mean, it was like an event, man, when an album would come out. I like when a new Prince album would come out, man, I'd be, you know, I'd get all hyped up. I knew it was coming out the next day, right? You go and buy the record store, and you're, you're in the, uh, the town, the, 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 the shopping area of your town doing something else, and you see the sign coming tomorrow, the new album from Prince, right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm gonna get that thing, Jack. And the next day at night, I'm like, man, that music is going to be great. I can't wait to pick up that album. Sign of the Times. It's going to be out tomorrow. Going to go get it or, or you know, or whatever, right? And, you get, and, and at the time I was a kid, you know, you catch the bus, right? I was living in Philadelphia at the time. You go to Center City, Philadelphia. It took about 20 minutes to get there, right? Maybe 15, 20 minutes on the subway or you get on the bus. Whatever was coming first, I was going to get on that. You get on and you're sitting there, right? And there was always like uh, whatever the hit single was because there was always like the first song that comes out. That's the hit single and everybody's playing on radio every eight seconds, right? You go, you going downtown to get that album, Jack. And you go down there, you get it, you look at the thing, you pick it up. There it is, right? You listen to the, you crack it open after you buy it. You're on the bus, you're riding home or whatever because I was a kid at the time. Oh, yeah. And that was a special experience going to the record store. It was a, it was a cool experience. You walk into the record store and all, every section of the record store would have a group of people that like that specific genre of music. And everybody's clothes was different. You'd have the golf people over there, the rock people over there, the R&B people over there, the hip hop people over there. And everybody would, and everybody would, you know, have a great time, man. They'd be playing the music in the record store. It was fantastic. And every once in a while, I shouldn't say every once in a while, a lot of times you'd wind up picking up music that you wouldn't normally pick up because you you know while you were waiting for your stuff to get ring up rung up some music will be playing hey who's that that's this guy oh let me go check his thing out oh yeah his album's good then you go back and you listen to a couple cuts man i'll spend 10 bucks and this is five songs in there i like you want to buy another album or cd that you didn't even think you were going to get it was a great experience man it's amazing like now it just pops up like i said you know, now people listen to the music on their on their phones like I do. I listen to all my music on my phone. But I remember when it wasn't that small. It was a small device. But back then, you we used to have to get cassettes. And I got nostalgic, man. So I went into the basement and I started digging out some boxes, right? And I opened up this box that was taped up, had my handwriting on there, Jack. And I opened it up and it was all, and you know, you open up a box in the basement. And you, you don't, you don't remember putting anything in there. You know, you put stuff in there because that's your handwriting, but you don't know what the hell's in there. You open it up, 
right? And you're looking at, and you see like, whose crap is this? It's your crap, but it's been in there so long, you don't remember having that crap. You got baby shoes that your parents gave you, a hat that your parents gave you. You got some clothes for when you were in better shape, right? And you got some sneakers that look like crap. You got all sorts of crap you don't remember and all that kind of crap, right? And if you find some adult magazines that you know you got a hold of when you were 13 years old and you know damn well you are not gonna touch those books you don't remember doing anything with them books or those magazines i should say you don't remember doing anything while looking at those magazines but you know damn well you did something looking at those magazines it's got you know what i'm saying and even when you're 14 years old you didn't even have to have adult magazines all you had to have is whatever female you had a crush on a group of females you had a crush on where anything even remote provocative because when you're that young it don't take much boy bow you take care of yourself bow. it don't take long well it didn't take long for y'all take hours to me because i mess anthony <laughs> don't judge me shut up back to the story right and open up the box man and inside the box was an old cheap walkman and I shouldn't say Walkman because Walkman is a Sony product. And back then it was the state of the art cassette player and they were the state of the art uh, CD players. And I had both of them back then. Right. But this wasn't that because you would call everything a Walkman, even though it wasn't a Walkman. And this was some cheap crap knockoff Walkman. And I don't remember. I said, man, I had really I had real. I saved them my money. I bought actual Walkman. What is this crap? And then I remembered why I had that cheap crap Walkman. I had saved up some comedy money back in the day because I started doing comedy at 17 a million years ago. And I was going to a gig. It was a gig. I was going to be there all week. And I was excited. And I was a little nervous. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm getting treated like an adult, like a grown up. Man, I'm going to be at this place all week. Whoa, man. So I, you know, I, I packed up clothes early, bought a little bit of clothes specifically for the Friday and Saturday night shows, right? Packed up some clothes, packed up everything a couple of days early because I didn't want to make any mistakes. I even put in music that I would normally listen to every day, packed it up and put it in the bag. I'm just going to have to sacrifice. I'm just going to have to not listen to it for a couple of days because I want to make sure I have it when I arrive in that place. I don't want no problems. I bought a whole bunch of batteries, threw them bad boys in there so I could listen to the music, listen to the music, listen to the grooves. Oh, yeah. Right? Couldn't sleep the night before because it was the first time I was doing a gig where I was going to be there that long. Normally, you go to a gig, I'd catch a train to the gig, do the gig, catch a train back. Not a big deal. Or I'd have one of the older comics. I'd, I'd meet them someplace. They'd give me a ride there. I'd get a ride back. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. No need to be nervous. I'm going to be with friends. But I wasn't going to know anybody this weekend. I mean, I'm some weekend week. I wasn't going to know anybody this week. It's just going to be me. It's going to be me as a grown up. My first time going to a gig as an adult where I don't know anybody on the show. Nobody. And I wanted to leave early because I wanted to get there early. It's something I still do to this day. I get to places early. Started back then. The habit started back then. It's a good habit to have. You know, that way the booker knows you're in town and they're not nervous, you know, when you're when you're there early. But I was so juiced up that I couldn't sleep the day before I was supposed to travel. And I did something which I haven't done, which I don't do often, which I virtually never do, which was over sleep. In my haste to go to sleep and get a good rest. I broke my pattern and I did not do what I normally do, which is set the alarm, wait a couple minutes, double check, wait a couple minutes, triple check, quadruple check. I didn't do any checks. The checks bounce. And I woke up and I looked at the clock and oh, sweet God, I looked at the time on the clock. I remember the time that the train was supposed to leave. I remember how long it takes to get to the train. Oh, no. And I was so glad I packed everything early jumped up i ain't even got time to listen to my music i ain't got time for that crap i can't wait let me just run out here because i just remembered i packed everything so i must have packed my walkman right of course i did i wouldn't make a mistake like that <laughs> run to catch the bus catch the bus to the train barely make the train oh, all aboard 
Where's that stupid punk ass comic who should be on the train? There he is running down looking like an idiot. <laughs> you must, you just made a kid. Here, let me see your ticket. Okay, go ahead. There's your seat. Oh, God. Oh, everything's going to be okay. Oh, I made the train. Thank God. I just barely made the train. Oh, man. Let me just listen to some music to calm down. Reach my hand in my bag. Pull out Prince and the Revolution. Purple Rain. Oh, yeah, my favorite album. Oh, yeah, Jack. Pulled out some fresh batteries. I know I got batteries in the Walkman, but I'm going to put some fresh batteries in it because this is my first gig. I got my Prince and the Revolution music. Yeah, Jack. Here it is, Jack. It was not in there. I tore that bag apart. It was not in there. I don't know why I looked through the bag five or six times. It wasn't like the Walkman was going to just miraculously appear in the bag because it was at home sitting on my desk next to the alarm clock that I didn't set. Oh. There was a little bit of a stop and everybody got off the train for a minute and I saw a little hobby shop. I shouldn't say hobby shop. It's one of those shops that sells a little bit of everything. It's basically, you know, uh, you know, they, they sell, they'll sell you a cupcake, they'll sell you a sandwich, they'll also sell you an iron, you know, <laughs> you know, those, those, those like, look, whatever you need to buy, we sell it. It reminds me of if you've ever seen the, uh, what's that show, uh, Good Times. Remember the show Good Times? If, uh, some of you do, some of you don't. And there was a guy, was it Good Times? It was one of those 70s shows. I can't remember what show it was. I think it was Good Times. And there was a guy named Lenny and he always had appliances under his coat. My name is Lenny. And if I ain't got any, then that means there ain't in that. And he'd open up his coat and he'd have some kind of, I think it's, I think it was a comedian named Dap Sugar Willie. And he would do, uh, he would do this bit, you know, he'd open up his coat and he'd have these appliances and crap, all sorts of stuff. And of course, when he opened up the other side of his coat, it would be something so outlandish that you couldn't believe someone had it under his coat. It was kind of like that. Man, my audience is old. The young people in the audience are like, nah, bruh. Well, now just shut up, punks. You know what I'm talking about. You back to the story. Damn it. <laughs> so I walk into the store and I see a Walkman knockoff. Hmm. And I remember what I paid for my Walkman. I think my Walkman was like a hundred bucks or something like that. So I'm going, and this, this thing was like $22. I'm going, how much of a hunk of crap is this for $22? But I was desperate, man. I didn't have my Walkman and I wanted to listen to my grooves. You know, I also wanted to, you know, uh, I was like, all right. So I buy the thing. This is going to be good, my friend. You're going to love this Walkman. It's great. It's incredible. And I'm looking, I'm like, it's $22. Just give me the damn thing. I get back on the train. I put the tape in. I play it. And it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Did it sound as good as my Walkman? Hell no. It was a $20 Walkman. But It worked. Man, it chewed through the batteries twice as fast. But who cares? I had a boatload of batteries. It was okay. And that Walkman lasted the whole week. And even though it wasn't as good as a Walkman, my normal Walkman, it, it did the job. I could listen to my grooves. I could listen to my show playback. It was great. Because it, you know, recorded. Oh, man, this is great. And as it turns out, decades later, that Walkman from that trip was the one in the box I was describing. Unbelievable. Only got a couple of scratches on it, but those scratches came from back then. I actually had boxed it back up and put it away safely as a backup, a backup that I obviously decades later never needed. But it's still there. And I'm wondering, does this cheap crap Walkman, does it still work? Huh. Open up the box that was next to it, which had all my cassettes and CDs in them because I don't play those anymore because I'm hip and cool like you young kids. Yeah, <laughs> I should not have said hip and cool. Shut up, punks. Back to the story. So open up the box and there it was. The exact same Prince and the Revolution Purple Rain soundtrack on cassette. The exact same one from back then. And this is the Walkman from back then. Decades. Decades over 30 years will they work will the cassette player work will the cassette work let's find out 
First thing I do, I have to flip over to the, the, the Walkman wannabe and open up the back. Because if there's a couple of batteries in there from back then, game, set, match. Because the acid from the battery will have long since exploded and ruined the damn device. Oh, hell no. Please, God, no. And there's no cause there's no batteries in the Yeah, Jack. Open up the cassette player. I slide the cassette in. Oh, yeah. At least the door works. Let me shake it up. It doesn't seem to be rattling, so I guess there's no broken parts in there. Huh, I wonder, it must, it must have been in better condition than I thought when I put it in there. But what I need to do now is to get some batteries. Uh, let me see what kind of batteries it takes. Double A batteries, of course. I take some double A batteries out of my bowl of double A batteries. Yeah, I'm a, I record a lot. I have lots of half dead batteries. Shut up, punks. And I put two of the, <laughs> I put two of the double A batteries in the back. And I press the rewind button. I don't want to press the play button right away because I don't know if the damn thing even works. I press the, re the, the rewind button and it's rewinding the tape. Now, sometimes when these things get broken, they rewind slowly, but this is rewinding quickly at the speed it's supposed to. Then it stops. It's at the beginning. Do I dare press the play button? Because quite frankly, I mean, think about this. This thing has been played for three decades. The simple fact that it came on was surprising to me. And even though I don't listen to cassette tapes, because who the hell listens to cassette tapes? I didn't even know I had this thing in there. It's some nostalgia with this tape because it's my it's my purple rain tape from the 80s. And even though I don't listen to it, I still don't want it chewed up. Do I press the play button and, and, and maybe rip this tape up? And uh, and I literally sat on a on a on an upside down box with this thing in my hand. And I, I didn't realize that five minutes had gone by because I was afraid to play press the play button because I didn't want to chew up the tape but curiosity got the best of my ass curiosity snuck up behind me and slapped me in the back of the head Bow! dude you don't even play the tape punk push the play button so I push the play button because that's what I heard that's the part of the tape before the music comes on and I'm wondering is it going to play the music Dearly beloved. Whoa, it's playing the song. But even though the song was playing and I loved that song, underneath the song was still. Now, was that always there? Because obviously we moved from cassettes to CDs and CDs are digital music cleaned up. There's none of that hisses and pops in the background. Were the hisses always there and we just didn't know they were there? Do we just, am I just aware of them now because I'm, I've been listening to digital music for the past 20 something years? Mm -hmm. And then I realized, yeah, those hisses and pops were always there. We just didn't know any better. You ever watch an old movie or an old TV show where you watch an, some old footage in the news and you see news footage from the 90s, which was not that long ago, and it looks lame compared to today's video? And you watch stuff from the 80s and it looks ancient and from the 70s, you're going, what do they do? Rub a potato on the damn uh, camera? But at the time, if you were around at the time, you that was the best video that was available. You didn't know any better, but now you know better, and now I know better. It's amazing how that cheap crap Walkman sounded so good back then, but now I want to listen to it now. Hell no. <laughs> I mean, even the headphones were those things back in the day, man. We have a good Walkman, the headphone foam would last for a long period of time. You'd have your head, headphones on outside the ear, earphones, and they had that foam around it that would cover your ear. Oh, man, with the cheap crap Walkman, you pull that thing off your head one time, rip. Now, all of a sudden, you got one foam on your left ear and no foam on your right. And people are looking at you like, oh, it's one of them cheap ass, uh, well, punk ass uh, dollar store uh, Walkman. Ha, 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 loser. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> it's amazing when you think back on it, man, because it was such a cheap crap Walkman. And the simple fact that I kept a hold of it just goes to show you, because I don't like to spend money on dumb stuff to begin with, because a lot of people will spend money on stuff that doesn't make any sense. I don't spend a lot of money when you go to the grocery store. I don't buy all the damn quote name brand products. Hell no. Do you? Right? It's not like you can't afford some of the stuff, but let's be honest. Is it really that much better? Hmm? Some things are. Some things aren't. I had some relatives and some friends that used to do that all the time. I remember I was hanging out with a friend of mine. We were show up, and at the same time, we're hanging out in the supermarket, and I'm watching him buy these name brand products. I know what he made for a living, and I also know because I knew what he made for a living. His punk ass definitely didn't need to be buying all of that crap. 
And unfortunately, we were really cool friends. And as I'm watching him buy the stuff that I know he can't afford, I already know as I'm standing there that I'm not actually in a supermarket. I'm in a time machine. Why do I say I'm in a time machine? Because I can see in the future. And what do I see in the future? A phone call from this guy when he runs out of money a little bit like a day or two early. You know, I'm trying to nudge him. Hey, you know, I'm buying uh, this cereal, which costs a lot less than that. Yeah, man, I don't like that cheap stuff. I like to buy the good stuff, man. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, shit, you um, future me, boy, future me is going to be mad right now. Future me is going to be mad. You go up to the thing and he buys the thing and he's already complaining as we're walking to our cars. Man, this stuff costs way more than I thought, man. <laughs> but it's worth it. And I'm going, oh, God. Uh, apparently, this, this parking lot's also a time machine because I can see the phone call that's going to be coming in five and a half days. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Oh, he didn't call. Well, maybe he could afford that crap. Maybe I was wrong. Day six. Hello? Yeah, man. I'll tell you, man. Woo, boy. Yeah. Yeah. How's everything going, man? Everything going good? Yeah, everything's going fine. Yeah, man. It's been a long week, man. Long week, man. Yeah, man. My wife's getting on me, man. Long week, man. You know what I'm saying? You know? You know what I'm saying? I mean, whenever she runs low on money, I don't, I don't mind giving her money, but the, you know what I'm saying? But if it's the other way around, you know, yes, I don't, I don't even ask her for money anymore. Like, if I need to like some money, I don't even bother asking her, man. Yeah, man, it's been a long week, man, long week, man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know, even when you're making a good living, sometimes you run a little short. Here it comes. Begging on the phone. Hey, man, it's a long week, man. Long week, man. I'll tell you, man. Just, just, yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I, was, I, mean, I was just, you know, you know, I was just telling my wife, man. She was, uh, she was over there. She told me something. She needed some, some money to get her nails done. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was like, yeah, man. You know, and I gave her the money to get her nails done. She didn't even worry about whether I needed, nah, I needed the money. I'm just saying, you know, it's been a long week, man. Long week. Mm-hmm. And the whole time I'm sitting there. I know he's going to, I know the next thing that comes out of his punk ass mouth is, yo ass, can I borrow $40? I have the $40 to borrow, to, to, to lend him. I don't mind. I know that, you know, he's going to give it back to me eventually. It's not really that big of a deal. I just wish he would get all, get to it. I don't need all of this dawdling and dragging it out. Just get to the point and ask me for the forty dollars so I can give you the forty dollars so you can leave me alone. Long week, man. Long week, man. You know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. And gas prices, man. Gas prices, man. You know, I don't even, you know, I don't really drive that much. It really don't call. I mean, it don't really cost that much for me to get gas. You know, as far as as far as traveling to work. But you know, it's a long week, man. Long week, man. You know, it's a long week. I'm on the end of the phone going. Oh. Yeah, man, the long week, man, long week, man. You know, what I'm you know that the, uh, the case of water. You know, when you buy a case of water, it was normally like three dollars. It was like four fifty, man. I mean, when the sale was over, man, you know, some of the stuff that I thought uh, we was in the store that I was gonna buy was, was you know, it cost a lot more than I thought. I man, I remember, you know, what I'm saying I thought that my 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 discount card would work on some of those things, which it turns out, you know, they just hadn't changed the signs. Some of the stuff that I thought was gonna cost less actually cost a lot more so it was a big surprise at the cash register man you know and people a lot of people don't realize that when you when you, you, you the groceries you know sometimes you you don't think about how much groceries cost because sometimes you know you know they cost maybe more than you think and then you, you think everything is going to be cool and then you know something will happen you know you know maybe the kids need to buy something or you know have a repair or something like that you know yeah because you and uh you know you know what happens with those things man you know when, when those things come up on you, you know you know what it's like right um, I guess it's a long week, long week. Yeah, it's a long week, man. Long week. <laughs> it's a, I looked over at the clock and I realized that half an hour had gone by and he was just explaining how each part of his life was slightly more expensive this week than he thought it was going to be. He literally could have just called me up and said, yo, ass, man, do me a favor, man. I run a little short. I need $40 till Saturday or till next Monday. Can I get that from you? You know what I would have said? All right. Or if I didn't have it, I ain't got it, man. And then let him go on to beg somebody else. But I had to listen to 38 minutes of long week, man, long week. And I, and I was like, ah, oh, let me just get this over with because I got stuff to do. Yo, man. Yeah, man. Apparently it's been a long week, man. You need to hold something. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, if you got some, you know, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, you know, 
you need? Uh, you know, about forty dollars. Okay. You bring it over. Sure. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> you know, when I the, when I have the when I need to borrow money from people, you know, how I do this. This is my phone call. Hey man, what's up? Yo, yeah, this is S. Yo, man, look. If you got, it, I need to borrow four weeks. I need to borrow uh, forty dollars till till Friday, man. I'm running a little short. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, come get it. Cool. I'll be there in a minute. All right. Bang. Done. <laughs> You'll never hear me on the phone. Hey, man. This is S. Hey, what's going on, S? What's going on? Yeah, man. You know, um, you know, the pandemic has kind of cut my gigs down. You know, you know, the gigs, uh, the gigs aren't as, as you know, aren't what they used to be. A lot of the audiences are. You know, they're a lot, they're a lot smaller because they're spacing out the show, the uh, audience members because of the, the pandemic and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And I've had to do a lot of other things. I haven't been able to podcast like I wanted to, you know, uh, as much. I'm getting back to podcasting now, but it's going to take a while to, to get everything to get back up to speed. You know, it's been a long week. It's been a long week, man. It's been a long, been a long week. Yo, man, you need to borrow $40 or something. Yeah. Take, get, get the, in fact, here's a hundred dollars. Here's a hundred dollars is worth to give you the hundred dollars. Shut your punk ass up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it just it just brought, brought up memories. The only reason I was thinking about all the music and stuff like that is because everybody was uh, online arguing and fighting about Rogan, and uh, I'm not arguing and fighting about Rogan. Even if I was going to talk about Rogan, everybody has beat that topic down so much that I would feel like I was just piling on to a bunch of stuff that everybody else was talking about. You know, and if you know me, you pretty much know how I feel about that situation. And if you don't, who cares? Because I ain't talking about it because I'm bored with the topic already. Okay. Okay. Just don't say the N word. Let's move on from that. All right. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> It just shows you how, how, um, you know, when, when you, when you, when you, how, how, what's the best way to put this? But somebody always, some, I remember somebody, it's, it's a saying where you go, don't meet your heroes because you will be disappointed in them. And he, Rogan's not a hero or anything like that. But I, I was just thinking about famous people that you like, and then you find out that they did or said some dumb stuff. And it's really, really disappointing because I love Twitter and all those kind of social media to, um, services. But the problem is, all of your favorite stars are on there and now you get to hear their untrained, un-PR filtered thoughts. And you'll see childhood stars, shows that you like, shows that you watch today or last week or you're going to watch next weekend. And you find out that the people that were on the shows that you love turned out to be huge uh, pieces of crap, Right? I'm I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to do that. But when I was a kid, I used to spend a lot of time at my grandmother's house because my grandmother literally lived across the street from my school. So sometimes I would spend some of the early day parts of the day during the summer at my grandmother's house because all my friends lived by the school. So, my, you know, they take me over there and I'd hang out there. My grandmother would watch me and my siblings and we'd all play with our friends. And one of the things we used to do was a couple of there was a guy who is a talk show host that I freaking loved as a, no, no, sorry, not a talk show host, a game show host. I mean, I mean, a talk show host, game show. He was a game show host, and I used to love this guy. I used to think this dude was hilarious. And even as an adult, when I would watch on cable or something like that, I mean, who, who rewatches game shows? Nobody rewatches game shows, but I dug this dude so much that I used to rewatch the game shows. And sometimes I'd remember the episodes that came on when I was a kid. I even remember some of the jokes that he's and that and I hadn't at the time heard those jokes in 15 years at that time. And it was so cool. I was like, you know what? I remember doing a gig and I'm sitting there and uh, the other comments were going to come over and we were going to watch a football game. And I was watching the game show channel or some crap like that, just waiting for them. And they walked in and they're like, Yes, I gave us up. You watching the game show channel? I was like, yeah, and I was explaining to them how much I thought this guy was I, the same way I'm explaining to you that I enjoyed watching this guy. I thought this guy was funny as a kid. I thought this guy was still funny as an adult, and I enjoyed the dude, and everything was cool. And they sat down with me, and they're like, "Oh, let's see how funny this dude is, man. Come on now." And they started digging him. So we're sitting there digging it, and we were digging this dude, and they kept running back to back to back to back episodes of this game show. We were laughing and not like hysterically laughing, but like chuckling and enjoying it so much. We missed the first two minutes of the football game they came over to watch. 
That's how much I dug this dude. Right. And even now, when the, when the, when are they rerun? Well, not now, but this is before I, I realized it was a piece of crap. And then, um, and I'm watching and I was like, man, I was, I was once again watching one of those episodes. And then all of a sudden I saw some stuff that the dude was saying. And it was like, oh my God. It wasn't like we had a difference of opinion politically or anything like that, but this dude was a huge. A piece of crap and it bothered me because I dug this dude so much and I'll tell you how much it bothered me after I found out some of the rotten things this person had done and said I was sitting down watching some TV and I was flipping through I was going to go uh, and, I, and I remember because my TV and I had the, the computer hooked up to the TV. So I had a choice between watching a Netflix or a Hulu or whatever the streaming services are that I have um, and watching regular television. So I was flipping. I said, Let me see what's on regular television first, because I know if I dive into the uh, streaming services, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to wind up watching three or four episodes of something straight. So let me see what's up with this. And I flipped through and the game thing came on and he was there. And normally he would stop me for at least one episode. I would stop and out of nostalgia, I would watch it and enjoy it. And he's rattling off little jokes that I normally would have thought were funny. And I just didn't, I just couldn't, I just didn't dig it. I was just like, ugh. Because all I could see, you know, we ever watch a TV program where a person is talking and say for the sake of argument that the star of the show who's having the hallucination is hungry while the person is talking. And then that person turns into a chicken sandwich or something. You see that in a cartoon, you know, like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. He's, he's talking to him and he looks like a turkey, like a turkey or something like that because they're hungry. Or if you watch a movie and a person's talking and the person seems to be talking in a different language or other words and what they're saying is coming out of their mouth. And while this guy's being charming to the contestants and all of that kind of crap, all I could hear was the horrible things this dude was saying and had said. And I just couldn't watch it. Ugh. And that was one of the first times I actually had somebody that I really really dug from TV or movies or whatever and they just said and did some things that just made me go ugh and this person didn't even apologize for those things in fact they kept doubling down and getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse now sometimes a person will do things and they'll be horrible and then they'll change over the course of time and they'll become something different you know, we're not the same people we were when we were in our 20s. And keep in mind, for the record, I'm not talking about Rogan here. Once again, that's that's a whole different thing. This is something completely separate from that, because I don't want anybody to write to me. You're trying to talk about Rogan. No, I'm not talking about Rogan. I don't give a shit about that. I'm talking about just in general, just so we can be clear here. Because, I mean, it's, it's happened in the comedy world. I've met people that I thought were fantastic comics. They weren't famous comics, but regionally famous or someone who was a big in an area that I was in. But I thought were great guys or great gals. And then I met them and they were horrible. And for a moment, you go, well, maybe they're having a bad day. And then you find out through people you know and people you trust and people whose opinions you believe in and people who are open minded and people who don't have a history of lying to you and people who are known to be accurate when making assessments of a person's personality. Tell you and it confirms the horror show that you saw. It's really weird when you meet somebody or you become aware of things about somebody that you know and that you respected and whose work you love and it turns out they're a huge piece of crap. What I want to let you guys that are listening to me right now know when you meet me in person, when you find out about me, you're going to realize that I am not a huge piece of crap and I'm proud of that. <laughs> let me pause this for a second. Somebody's on the phone. Okay. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I hope I don't meet any of these losers. What a bunch of dopes. <laughs> Just because they've been listening to me for years, they think that I'm going to talk to them in person. Okay? Security. 
if I ever become famous from this podcast and any of these chumps roll up to me talking about we're big fans, do me a favor. I want one of y'all to call me away and say to them, oh, Mr. Thomas will be right back. So there'll be a plausible deniability while you rough them up. OK, and just smack them around a little bit, beat them up real good. Don't come up and talk to me like I'm one of them. Hell no. Hell no. They ain't crap. <sighs> OK, let me unpause this here. Talk to her. Go back to talk to these chumps. So anyway, guys, uh, sorry I had to pause. It was a quick phone call I had to make. Um, I definitely wasn't trash talking you and pretending to hit a pause button for comedic purposes. <laughs> Shut up. You know what show you signed up for. <laughs> okay, guys. Once again, uh, thank you for coming uh, back to listen. I've, I've, I know that the first show back, uh, a lot of you came back. The second show back, uh, a lot more came back. I guess the word is out that I'm uh, doing new shows. So I want to thank you guys more, more than anything for listening to my dumb ass like you do on a regular basis. I'll be here pretty much every week unless something comes up. I'm back, my friends. The thing that kept me from podcasting regularly, uh, that thing has been resolved. So I'm back to my regular schedule, you bastards. I might even do it more than one time a week if I, if I have the opportunity to. Uh, do me a favor. If you like this podcast, and you do make sure that you tell a friend to listen to this podcast too. If you think they like this, they will like this crap. Then do me a favor. Tell one person, at least one person to check out this podcast. If you have not subscribed, please do. And once again, if you do me a favor, if you can rate and review this podcast, I don't care if it's on iTunes, Spotify, whatever, whatever you listen to this podcast on. If there's an opportunity or a place to review this podcast, please do. And of course, five stars. OK, I don't want to have to rough you up <laughs> security. If you find that any one of them does anything less than five stars, beat them down. No, I didn't hit the pause button this time. I wanted them to hear. <laughs> I ain't playing. <laughs> Okay, folks, much love to you all, and I will see you again next time. Take care.